my peeps welcome back to my channel I know it's been two weeks but I had a lot going on last week but I'm here now and uh, today I'm just gonna chat for you a little bit and answer a couple questions and tell you a bit more about the state of my different series and um, yeah so if you haven't subscribed yet hit the subscription button below and hit that bell so you get notified of new videos I make and if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you would um, helps me a whole lot and we will get started here in a moment so yeah I did miss last week it was it was um, a busy day and I was pushing on the book I have finished Witching Time. It is soon to be off to my editor, so I'm very happy with that. Um, soared through the book, and it was a lot of fun. Raven had a lot more fun in this book than last book. Although, I suppose I had a lot more fun with Raven than she did, given it's all sorts of spooks and spooky creatures and set in the harvest time. Um... Monday, Autumn's Bane comes out. I am really hoping you love it and looking forward to hearing feedback on it. Um, it's a, a lot goes on in the book and it is very quickly paced. So you know, it's funny because my assistant Jen read through it and she was just like oh my god I couldn't put it down I couldn't stop it was so everything was happening and it was like yeah yeah and that's how it felt when I wrote it too um so let's see anything else going on oh Kindle Unlimited Chints and China series is in Kindle Unlimited now the second book Legend of the Jade Dragon is still processing through it's all on Amazon's side now, and hopefully in a couple days, if not before then, um, it will be available there too. But they're all, all six books, well, five books in the novella, are now in Kindle Unlimited for you to read. Um, I will be putting Bewitching Bedlam in there. I have to wait till I can get it down from one or two more sites, because you can't have it anywhere else if you're in Kindle Unlimited. And so I hope to have that in KU by, if not the beginning of September, by at least the first or second week in September. So I'll keep you updated on that. That is not a ghost that opened the door. That was Apple, I think. Um, I see him down there. Apple and Bridget know how to open doors, especially Bridget. Actually, she's really good at closing them and she's locked herself in rooms before because she gets in there and then decides to close the door for whatever reason and uh, then I hear her meowing a little while later and she can't get it open and it's it's an ongoing thing that she's been doing ever since we first got her I'm not sure what it is about her and doors I'm not sure if I had this during the last video but I have put a page on my site called the state of the series which will give you updates on all the series and where they're at and it will give you the date that I have last updated that page and I'll put a link below um, so you can find out when all your favorite series where, where they are at and some you know are not going to be updated for a while and others like the Wild Hunt are ongoing and the Blood Queen series um, I was going to think about writing a Whisper Hollow book later this year, maybe, but that's going to have to be put off till next year now. Uh, I have my reasons, and you will find out soon, um, mainly because I'm working on the Blood Queen series, which has that and the Wild Hunt are totally absorbing my thoughts right now. And I don't know if you know any writers personally. But sometimes when a project gets in our head, we can't do anything but work on that. Um, and these two series are just hammering in my head right now. So the characters are loud and clear and coming through. Um, 
as far as updates on Otherworld. I'm working on getting the rest of my rights back. I'm pushing on it. I am not promoting it because, frankly, I'm not going to support, you know, my ex-publisher in terms of keeping the rest of my books from me. Um, it's a long battle sometimes, and I know authors who've never gotten the rights back to some of their books. Unfortunately, it's heavily weighted on the publisher's side, and even though we are the creators, and we are the ones who, who make these worlds possible, um, authors generally are given, well, they're not given much respect, to put it that way. Writers are considered commodities by most of traditional publishing. Now, not every publisher is like that, and not every editor in a trad publisher is like that. But for the most part, and I've worked, I worked in trad publishing as an author for 20 years. Most of what I saw was that, yeah, um, authors are considered almost expendable, and it's as though we shouldn't expect payment for our work, you know, uh, we shouldn't expect to make a living off of a full-time job. Um, anyway, I'm not going to go on and on about that, but I am still working on getting my rights back to Otherworld. I really appreciate it if you would recommend my indie work instead of that series, because I'm, I'm trying to just basically focus on what I do control now, and I don't control most of Otherworld. Um, I wish I did. I really wish I did. If I did, I actually might consider branching out in that series a bit. You know, I'll never say never on it. Um, but not until and when I have all the rights back. So let's see, what else? More exciting news? Well, I don't know if it's exciting, just news from my life. You know, to me, some of it's exciting. But hey, this year, I kind of am enjoying sort of a moderate, you know, almost boring pace given everything that's happened this year. Um, we are still staying at home, um, still being cautious. We go out to one or two places that we feel are safe and that are taking really good precautions on the COVID front. But um, otherwise, you know, it's like, yeah, we haven't had friends over for months. And we get together on Zoom calls and chat. And it's a, it's a whole different, different world. You know, I don't think any of us at the beginning of this year ever expected 2020 to shake out like this. But it's almost as though every single month comes up with a hold my beer situation. And... Uh, you know, there were, there were amorous toxic toads in Florida, and there were stinging jellyfish washing up on the shores in New England, and there were, um, there's, and this is not a laughing matter, but it's sad, um, there's something going on with rabbits in the southwest, like a rabbit Ebola type thing that is just with rabbits. Don't, don't worry about that spreading to humans, as far as I know it doesn't. Um, but the poor bunnies are dropping down there. Um, there was a comet that came close to Earth, and... Oh, oh, some monkeys stole some coronavirus tests that had already been taken on people, and ran off into the forest with them uh, uh, somewhere over... Um, across the ocean, and I don't know, just all this weird stuff, murder hornets, we have murder hornets in Washington, they found one, so yes, we do have murder hornets, and, oh, and then I read recently about this fungus that turns cicadas 
into zombies. It, it feeds on them inside and controls their actions. And it's like, okay, we have zombie bugs, we have murder hornets, they're gonna link up, you know, at some point and create an army and take us all over, I think. And it's spider season now. We have spider season in the Seattle area and every year that's, you know, it's like happens like clockwork around mid-August. We have these giant, hello Kaylee, hello. We have these giant spiders here and not by giant, I mean the lake span, seriously, up to five inches. Um, they don't look like tarantulas, but they're very creepy and they're brown and they're not recluse. Um, we also have hobo spiders. Don't give me Kaylee turned off the camera. Um, the giant European house spider is what they're called. And they are the second fastest spider in the world. And they have giant leg spans. And oh my gods, they're terrifying to me. I'm an arachnophobe. I'm arachnophobic and these things cling to the ceilings, they get in the tub, they race across the floor, and usually when you're least expecting it, um, and I have a special scream that Sam calls my spider scream, which I, I find hilarious in one way, but it's very true. And I went into the bedroom the other night, and I was getting ready for bed. And I got out my iPad because I was going to lay on the bed, um, chose, and goof around. And, well, gee, I lay down and I look up and there is a giant spider on the ceiling. And, of course, I freaked out. Unfortunately, it caused an adrenaline rush, which, with MCAS, can cause a reaction. And so, middle of the night, I had a bad reaction. And... Part of it was triggered off by the fear of seeing that freaking big black blotch on the ceiling. Luckily, Sam is my spider, my spider getter. And, uh, yeah. You know, and I don't care how many people tell, no, do not walk on the keyboard, pumpkin. Yes, I'll pet you. Okay. Um, people are like, Oh, just put them outside. Well, A, they're just going to come back in because they're not outside spiders. They are inside spiders. They're house spiders. B, any later in the year, they're going to die. And C, no, we're not putting them outside. One moment. Haley is suddenly in a, I want attention mood. I want to be in the video. Well, she can be in the video, and that's fine, but don't go knocking stuff around, okay? No. What can I say? Cats. You know, anybody who's got a cat understands. Cats. Um, okay, that's a good place to lay. So, yeah, it's been an interesting week. Um, I, as I said, I finished writing at Witching Time. Got it done in record time because it just flowed and I was in the groove and um, I'm editing through it now and the next book I write is Blood Roses which is the first Blood Queen, Blood Queen book and that will come out in November and uh, so I, I'm just on, I feel like I'm focused again and that's a good feeling. Um, for a long time earlier this year, you know, it was like I couldn't keep focus for anything. I was just out of it. You know, it was like everything was just like flowing by and I was just watching it go. And I was absorbed with watching the news and keeping track of what was going on. And it got me to the point where I was just so overwhelmed and exhausted by it that I had to pull back. And it's helped a lot. Um, part of me still feels like I need to be informed because I'm one of those people who feels like I need to be informed. But I've realized how much it can affect my health. Speaking of health, I've made a decision. Um, I'm at the point where I'm not sure what I'm reacting to. 
you know. Some things I react to one day, I don't react to, to them the next. That is par for the course with mast cell activation syndrome. However, I, I am going to go back on a very strict elimination diet because I'm not sure what our actual problem foods at this point anymore. I know dairy is. I mean, I haven't eaten dairy in years. Um, but there are other things that could be triggering me off that I don't know at this point because I've added them back in and sometimes I react, sometimes I don't. So I'm going to spend a month on a very strict elimination diet and then start slowly adding foods in. The last time I did this, it took six months which was a hell of a long time. However, um, honestly, it was the best way that I discovered problem foods. Uh, you know, I, I, I start off with about 10 or 11 foods and I stick on that for a month and clear my system. These are foods I know are safe. And I clear through my system and then I start adding back one at a time every three days. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm going to be off coffee for a month. It won't be so bad this time because even though I found coffee that's seemingly safe for me to drink, I haven't drunk, I haven't been drinking anywhere near what I used to. And I can go a couple days without it without even noticing. So, you know, one month, I can do this, I, I love it, but I can do it a month without just to make sure, and that may be the first food I try to add back in. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I am really tired of taking as much Benadryl as I do. I am really tired of having reactions interfere with so many things. and. You know, they're bound to anyway because of the MCAS, but if I, my light just fell. Hold on. Back again. Time for another try. Um, as I was saying, I'm tired of the reactions. and I know they are going to continue because that's what MCAS does to your body. But if I can find ways to ease them down, Maybe I can push this into remission to some degree. And if it takes an elimination diet to start getting my body calmed down and the inflammation dying down, then so be it. Then I'll do it. Because, good gods, I'm, I stock up on Benadryl in bulk, people. It's like, it's my drink of, not choice, but it's it's my drink lately. And I'm just really tired of it. Um, MCAS can go into remission. I don't know that it can ever be cured and I've heard of I've heard of some potential things. One is some sort of neural retraining which I looked into and decided it seems kind of like a cult to me and I don't like the feel of the company that does that. But if there are ways physically I can get my body to calm down and the inflammation to die down, you know, that's going to help. So wish me luck, people. Um, maybe I'll check in on how it's going every now and then. So, hmm. I'm so tired of summer. I am so tired of summer. I am ready for autumn. I am more than ready for autumn. And, uh, you know, the sun's not my friend anyway. So I'm just like, okay, come on, bring on the rain, bring on the pretty leaves, bring on the cloudy skies. You know, our rainy season lasts about nine months here, and I'm perfectly happy with that. I could be happy with it 10 or 11 months. One month of sunshine is all I kind of need for my emotional health. I think that's about it for this video. Next time I'll be talking more about writing and maybe about my books and answer a few questions or something like that. So take care, have fun, tell me what you're doing in the comments, tell me what you're up to and are you ready for Autumn's Bane? Yes, it comes out Monday. Have you pre-ordered it? 
it can come down on your Kindle at that day or your Nook or whatever. Um, yes, it will be out in print. Maybe not the same day that it comes out on e-format, but I will put out the the paperback. So yeah, uh, other than that, have a wonderful rest of the weekend and a good week next week. And I will talk to you soon.